So far, we've learned about what precipitation reactions are. We've also learned how to write them down in a chemical equation, in the form of a molecular equation, a complete ionic equation, and a net ionic equation. Now, in this segment, we'll be doing stoichiometric calculations with precipitation reactions. And we'll be using the same stoichiometric techniques that we learned about in previous lectures. In this example, we're going to calculate the amount of calcium sulfide precipitate formed in this precipitation reaction. Here you see a picture of a calcium sulfate crystal. We can form a precipitate by mixing calcium nitrate with sodium sulfate. And the volumes and molarities of each of these solutions is already given here in the question. So what is the first step to determine the amount of precipitate formed? The first step is to recognize which ions are present in a solution. We know that sodium sulfate produces sodium and sulfate ions. And we know that calcium nitrate produces calcium and nitrate ions. Now, which of these ions interact to form the precipitate? Now, from the question, we can see that we have a calcium sulfate precipitate. So the calcium and sulfate ions are the ions that matter. The sodium and the nitrate ions are spectator ions. So we can leave them out for this question. Let's focus only on the ions that interact. With calcium and sulfate, we can write down the net ionic equation. We see that one sulfate interacts with one calcium ion to form the precipitate calcium sulfate. We have to determine which one of these reagents is the limiting reagent. Is it calcium or sulfate? We have to do this because the limiting reagent determines how much of the precipitate we form. In order to determine the limiting reagent, we have to determine the number of moles of each of the ions. Let's first look at how many calcium ions we have in a solution. Calcium ions come from calcium nitrate, and each calcium nitrate unit produces one calcium ion. That means if I multiply the volume and the molarity of the calcium nitrate solution, I can find the number of moles of calcium ions. That is 0.5 liters times 0.05 molar equals 0.025 moles of calcium ions. We can do the same thing for the sulfate anions. Sulfate ions come from sodium sulfate, and each sodium sulfate unit produces one sulfate anion. I can multiply the volume and the molarity of that solution to find the number of moles of sulfate ions. That is 2 liters times 0.02 molar, and that equals 0.04 moles of sulfate ions. The next step is to determine the mole ratios. The mole ratio, as stipulated by the chemical equation, is one mole of calcium for each one mole of sulfate. That is one to one. What is the actual mole ratio? I just calculated how many moles I have for each of the ions. I had point 0.025 moles of calcium and 0.04 moles of sulfate. The ratio is 0.65. That is less than 1, and that means that the numerator is the limiting reagent. That means calcium is the limiting reagent and sulfate is the ion that is in excess. In order to determine how much of the precipitate I form, I take the limiting reagent, the number of moles of limiting reagent, which is calcium. 0.025 moles. I want to convert that into number of moles of the precipitate through the mole ratio. I have one mole of the precipitate, calcium sulfate, for each one mole of calcium. That means I form 0.025 moles of the precipitate. Once I know the number of moles of the precipitate, I have to perform one more conversion, the conversion from moles to grams. So I take 0.025 moles times the molar mass of the precipitate, and I find 3.4 grams of the precipitate, which concludes our calculation.